Thank you so much for watching. Now, at the height of the nonsense that's been going on while they're playing Canberra Colombo, where about 70 questions were being fired at the government about, oh, how dare the Prime Minister call uh, the uh, Commissioner of Police in New South Wales. Remember, at the heart of that is a suggestion that he is corrupt, that he is able to be influenced by anyone and that he would fold because, oh, they're from the Shire and Shire boys stick together. That is an allegation of corruption. Let's just be very clear, and they've been throwing that around all the way through. Well, Anthony Albanese, before, of course, he became the leader of the Labor Party, was the leader of the Labor Party in the House. So he knows every little move, both in an attacking way to uh, be an irritant in opposition and defending move when you are in government. Remember, that was his job as leader of the House when Gillard was desperately holding on to power. So he knows all the little games. And a little game that was being played by every single Labor MP was that any time a government MP was standing up and making speeches in the past couple of days, well, they moved for that person to no longer be heard. Now, always, the numbers would always end up falling, that the government would always end up saving their own speaker, but it meant that any meeting the government was involved in, everyone would have to leave every 20 minutes or so. It's an irritation tactic. Oppositions do it. Fine and fair enough. But they're not a particularly smart mob. This mob who uh, believe, by the way, simultaneously that Australia has a climate emergency, they voted for it uh, twice, don't forget, but then they also have denied Angus Taylor the ability to go to an international conference to talk about climate change. So apparently it's an emergency but not a big enough an emergency to mean he's not in the parliament for them to play Canberra Colombo today and next week. But things got particularly outrageous today, when this plan of shut up every government MP possible resulted in Philip Thompson, the member for Herbert, a man who has served this country, who 10 years ago was blown up by an IED in the Middle East. Well, this was him speaking and this was them trying to shut him up. We're talking about the, the NAIF, uh, which I found quite ironic that someone from the southeast corner would be sitting across from me, pointing and saying that we're not doing anything in the north. Maybe you should stay in your patch, mate. Sorry, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, because, Mr Deputy Speaker, the NAIF has rolled out uh, some projects, uh, projects within North Queensland, which include at JCU, which include at the airport. And they, they were. They did, the JCU did take uh, quite a while to get over the line because the Labor State Government decided to put roadblocks up because that's how it works. It's OK. I'm happy to, uh, to educate the Shadow Minister on how the NAIF works a little bit later, because that's not why we're here. Uh, we are here to, to talk uh, about uh, the Prime Minister's and uh, Minister Chester's announcement, uh, have announced that we would extend the, the eligibility... Uh, Herbert uh, will resume his seat. The member, member will resume his seat. The mo motion has been moved that the member be no longer heard. So they didn't stand up when he was delivering the political hit. They stood up and shut him up the second he moved on to the Prime Minister and Veterans Affairs Minister, who had made announcements about, among other things, veterans' suicide. This is what happened after he got to speak again. Thank you, Mr Speaker and uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I am absolutely disgusted in the member for Greenway's actions to quieten me when I was clearly said I wanted to talk about veteran suicide. That's just inappropriate and disgusting. What you've just done, you, it, so veteran suicide should be bipartisan. We should be working to, together, not for cheap political points. Why would you? Why does this need to happen? We should be working together. Um, and I, I will uh, start by saying, only three, two, three days ago, sorry, I get a phone call uh, from a mate in Townsville. Another veteran, a friend of mine, had died by suicide. Only a couple of days ago. This is where people in this house should be working together, yeah. not running away. Working together, veteran suicide and suicide prevention is all our business. All our business. Oh, it's, it's absolutely disgusting, the political point scoring that we're seeing from those opposite. 
Absolutely disgusting, and suicide prevention is our business. So what didn't you see? What was happening on the other side of the chamber? What were Labor MPs doing while they were trying to silence him and then walking away after losing a vote to do so? I spoke with Philip Thompson just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, so I was speaking on a bill around defence insurance um, and, and how it was going to help more people, um, especially in places like Townsville. But I also wanted to touch on veteran suicide, as it's extremely important. And by lowering the, the cost pressures, you know, making it a bit easier for people to live. But I had to... Uh, talk about the NAFE because the Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs jumped up and, you know, didn't tell the truth. But I did say at the start, I'm going to talk about veteran suicide. I uh, corrected him on his NAFE comments and then I went in to start talking about uh, veterans issues, including veteran suicide. And then, um, yeah, they stood up and moved a motion that I no longer be heard, which is pretty disgusting, really. Well, so, OK, so the game seems to have been today that every time a government MP started to get a little bit of steam up, Labor stands up and says, we vote that they no longer be heard. It's a revenge to the government using its numbers, as all governments do, to stop the opposition being able to just bang on and on and on and on and on about whatever the heck that they want to. I mean, I get it. Uh, yes. You know, you're, you're, you, we get it. It's, it's party politics. But you would think that someone on the Labor side would have been smart enough to work out, no, no, let's not do the smart-ass trick to the bloke who's a veteran talking about issues to do with veterans. But no, no, the party rule kept going and the smart-ass trick is what took place. And that's what happened. Uh, you know, suicide, suicide prevention, veteran suicide, mental illness, um, and imp improving mental health is not just a, uh, the coalition's baby and responsibility. It's everyone in this place. Every person who's a community leader that sits in Parliament House, it's our responsibility to lower stigma, to talk about it, to work together to help people. Now, all today did is, is create um, stigma around suicide prevention. Because I'm talking about veteran suicide and I'm talking about a mate, a mate who died a couple of days ago um, uh, from suicide. And, I'm ta and that's what we're talking about. And they're playing games. This, this creates stigma. It makes people not want to talk about things like this. And I'm absolutely embarrassed for them. And I was angry at the start, but I'm, I'm actually, you know, upset with it. I'm, I'm, it's just... I just don't understand why they play political games with suicide. Well, because they expect... And, I mean, you know this, but I'm just saying it to everyone else who's watching. They expect that the media wouldn't take notice. I mean, it's only after uh, your colleagues, yourself, the Prime Minister, started to talk about this that it forced the media to even recognise it. But as if any of that will turn up on the 6pm news. None of that will turn up on the, in, the, in the entrails of what happened today in Canberra. But it matters because it shows I... that when they want to play a game, that it doesn't matter what the other person is talking about, it is irrelevant to uh, them paying attention. Could you imagine if the government tried to do this on any of the, the identity politics issues that the left are obsessed with, but also quite correctly you say that veterans issues are not team red, team blue. They're team green and gold. Oh, they are, exactly. And I waited um, after I spoke. No one from the other side came over and spoke to me. Um, I waited after question time. No one came over. One person came over, but, you know, Albo didn't come over, the leadership team. They don't care. They were laughing about it when they left. That, that's not how we should be working together. When I got extra time to continue to speak, um, I thanked the, op the other side for uh, affording me the time to continue uh, talking about veteran suicide. Now, that's what we should be doing, working together, not punching each other in the nose around this. Leave the debates for other things. When it comes to mental illness and suicide prevention, we need to be working together because what I saw today absolutely is embarrassing. Well, and it's, a, and it's a final example, or yet another example, about talk the talk, not walk the walk. They'll say the right things on Anzac Day, they'll stay shush on the 11th of November. If they come face to face with a veteran in the street, oh, well, yes, we've really got to do something about this. Well, they came face to face oh. with a veteran in the parliament today and they tried to cut you off. Yep, um, and it's 
it, it, it really makes me angry that they wear the Are You OK badges, they jump up on uh, Suicide Prevention Day, they jump up to, to On Remembrance Day and Anzac Days and things like that, and then they'll look me down the eye with smiling on their face, laughing, um, couldn't care less, and only a couple of days ago, another veteran had died by suicide in Townsville, a mate of mine, they don't care, and, yeah, I, I, I expect, I, I do expect that Albo to find where his spine should be located and apologise, not to me, but to the family that they just disrespected today. Just finally, um, let's show respect to your mate. Um, can you tell me a little bit about him? Um, sadly, his story ends a couple of days ago, but how did you know him? Well, I knew him uh, through a friend of mine called Paul Warren, who lost his leg in Afghanistan um, through an IED blast that also killed Ben Renato, um, another friend of mine. Um, and this guy, our mate, uh, opened his, his house to Paul when he was going through his recovery in Brisbane and getting his surgeries and getting his leg looked after. Paul never met him before, but he opened his door, opened his house, opened his life to help him out. That's what he did. That's the kind of bloke he is. He's a mate's mate who looks after people and they created um, a great friendship. And, you know, we should remember the friendship, but also remember that if you, if you aren't doing OK, please please pick up the phone, please you can call my office anytime you want. You can email me, hit me up on Facebook. I'm here to help. Um, life is precious and let's look after each other.